One last thing you often have to do is, this is not very convenient because it's in joules. Oftentimes you have to work with electron volts uh, in this class. Now, electron volts are a measure of energy. Volts are a measure of potential, but electron volts are a measure of energy. So that lets us practice our unit conversion some more. So how can we do a formal unit conversion here? What unit should I put on the bottom? Because I want, to I want these units to cancel. And what unit should I put on the top? because that's the units that I want to put in. That's how we construct a conversion ratio. Notice that you put in the units before you put in any numbers. First you put in the units for the conversion ratio. How can we figure out what numbers these should be? One electron volt is like one plane. It's like the charge of an electron, isn't it? That's true. So it's like 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19. Uh, let's see, maybe they didn't give you that conversion ratio. Oh, they're using the MV. Oh, they're using a whole different conversion ratio. Well. Okay, that makes sense because it's negative 13 instead of negative 19 because it's mega or mega evil. However you say that, <laughs> M-E-E-V. <laughs> so it looks like it's a little hard to find that conversion ratio, so maybe we should write it down. We should write down that one electron volt is... 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19. Joules. That's right. Or if you wanted to work with mega electron volts... So you should just have these in your notes. Okay. All right, so. Um, they want it in the MEV, so. At least that's the example. Okay. I used. So we're going to do that. Then 1.81 times 10 to the negative 25. Instead of dividing? It's a dividing. Yeah. That's why it's so important to actually write down the conversion. And notice how you have to put the units in first. Because until you, until you put in the units, you don't know where the numbers are supposed to go. Right. Until we know that joules are on the bottom, we don't know that the 1.6 times 10 to the negative 13 is supposed to go there. Mm -hmm. OK. And, and the number now makes sense, actually. I got about 7? Yeah. seven. And that's a much more uh, handleable handleable yeah. number, yeah. tractable number there. Okay. But it's MEV per nucleon, right? I didn't follow my own advice. <laughs> I'm always putting the answer, so I'm glad that you picked up on that. All right, so. Uh, let me use a handout. So we've been going over the mass defect material in the middle. So we figured out how to find the mass defect. That's the total mass of the reactants minus the products. Because remember, you have more mass that you started with. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, in calculating mass defect, now in the right-hand column, I say that you should use the nuclear masses and not the atomic masses. Mm -hmm. Well, that was true for that course that I made the handout for. But in this course, you're also seeing another trick. It's OK to use atomic masses as long as you use the atomic mass for everything. Mm -hmm. Because remember, then they all have electrons, and the electrons would cancel out. So you should add that to the handout. So now you have two ways to calculate it. You can use all nuclear masses, which don't include the electrons. Or you can use all atomic masses, which you do use. Well, you kind of use whichever is convenient for the numbers that you've been given. Okay. Remember that if you look up the mass of a proton in your inside front cover, it just says proton. So that's a nuclear mass, not including the electron. On the other hand, if they tell you the atomic mass of 1H1, well, that's a hydrogen atom. So that does include the electron. In this problem, they were giving us a bunch of atomic masses, so it's convenient just to treat these all as atomic masses in this case. What if you wanted to use the nuclear mass approach, though? For the nuclear mass approach, if you were given any atomic masses, you would have to just subtract the masses of the electrons, and then you could work with the nuclear masses. 
the mass of an electron is in your inside front cover. Notice the point, you should always express the mass defect in relationship as a ratio. Express the mass defect as a ratio, or we didn't do that, but we expressed the energy as a ratio. So we expressed the energy here as a ratio. At first this was uh, related to just one helium, because we were talking about the mass defect for making one helium, so that we could do then the, uh, if you don't do this, it's hard to do the unit conversion to change this into nucleons, which is what they normally want. So it's very helpful to express it this way. You don't have to express the mass defect this way. You don't really need this until we get to the energy. So you can express the energy this way. Then the next equation is E equals mc squared. As I say in the right column, you've got to use SI units. Okay, so those are the key ideas uh, that we just went over there. And uh, we didn't get a chance to go over the kinetics of radioactive decay, but you'll... Um, the formulas on the top of the handout might be useful to you when you're looking through those problems. Okay. Thank you. Oh, thank, thank you. you so, much. so always you want to write the chemical equation for what's happening. So when you're trying to find the mass defect, write the equation as you're starting with separate protons and neutrons and, you're, and write down what you're creating, write down what side the energy is on, and if you find the mass defect, you can use E equals mc squared to find uh, the binding energy. These videos are offered on a pay-what-you-like basis. You can pay for the use of the videos at my website. There's a link to my website in the info box. The address is www.freelance-teacher.com slash videos.htm. Or you can just use the link in the info box. Thank you.